you are allowed to stand behind your pulpit and preach stuff. Thank you for that privilege. I honor you, such a humble man. Humble, extremely humble. 14 years, he's a great God. No man puts his hand to the plow and turns back 14 years. I'm encouraged. He's a great God, say. Some of y'all may give him troubles and issues, problems here and there. And one of the things that probably pastors won't tell you is what they go through personally because they've got to stay strong for you and pray for you. Y'all go on with your attitudes and stuff like that. As much as the pastor, the human self, the flesh may say, I, I, God, I don't really want to deal with this person. That's the fleshly part. But as a shepherd, we still have to go beyond that. Push through and love you. <laughs> it takes only God to do that. He's a great God. Today, I want you to be strengthened and know that God is going to be with you through it all. And if you are in this church and you've, you've ever considered leaving this church, you are here today because God chose you to be here. Stay planted. If the, for whatever reason you feel like, well, something needs to be done in the church or it needs to grow, it's not his responsibility. It's your responsibility. He's a great God. Because God has called us to make disciples. He's discipled you. Who are you discipling? Whatever needs to be done, you are responsible, not him. Every now and then come, Pastor, go, Pastor, can you do this? Can you, can you do this? But the, the, we push all the responsibility to the pastor and we keep walking. We don't show up, no commitment, nothing. And we just want to give instructions to the pastor on what to do. But you don't want to put your hands in. He's a great guy, say. And I believe that the next phase that God is taking you, this church to, and the entire body of Christ is a phase of power. Somebody say power. The Bible declares that the word, the gospel, did not come only in word, but also in the city of Toronto, five million people at our church numbers are dwindling. But the only difference that we can make is through the manifestation of God's power. Somebody say he's a great God. Say. So I greet you all in the name of Jesus. Thank you for the privilege. The elders, all the associates, the armor bearer, everybody who stood with this great man of God. Thank you. Thank you. Put your hands there one more time for First Lady and Pastor Thompson. Come on, come on, come on. Y'all. Y'all ought to celebrate. I said celebrate. <laughs> Celebrara. Come on, celebrate. Thank you. You may take your seat. And I couldn't have been here without the support of the team. Every pastor needs a dream team. Somebody say a dream team. I thank God for my family, my beautiful wife, sitting back there. Can you, honey, can you just stand and let everybody see who you are? This way. That's my one and only first lady. And my two kids back there. Um, and uh, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, they are the elders of our church. Can you please? Elder Erica and Elder Clinton. My associate pastor is here, Pastor Ignatius. Can you wave? And my friend, my assistant, Chris Holmes. Put your hands together. I'm not used to I'm not used to this armor bearing thing, Pastor. <laughs> uh, but he took it upon himself to support me and help me with what I'm doing. So every now and then, even when he was bringing my Bible, I said, uh, "Can you please, like, hold my Bible?" But God sends people your way to make the work easier for you. Amen. And I, I'm just glad to say that I love these people. Without them, I will not be here. 
and not, not all of them were able to make it. Uh, oh, I, um, I was almost missed you. Sister Antoinette, she's one of our ministers on our intercessory team wave. Come on. Sorry about that. So we need that as pastors. We need the support. Without your commitment, without your faithfulness, without your loyalty, we cannot go on. We can't. So I thank you all for being with me. Uh, they are with me almost everywhere I go. They support me. Some of them were not able to make it tonight. I remember one time I said, you know, um, just sort of making a statement uh, in, the, in the midst of my conversation. I made a big statement that you know I felt like giving up at some point. And uh, one of our leaders said, Pastor. If you close this church, I will come to your house. So I have no option. Amen. So one more time, give it up for the man of God and the woman of God. All right, I'm going to try not to be before you long. And tonight, we, today we're going to go through, uh, touch a little bit on the phase that God is going to take you guys through as a church. Amen. How many of you want to see this church grow? How many of you love to pray? How many, how many of you show up for prayer meetings? Do you guys have prayer meetings? How many of you show up for, for prayer meetings in this church? Okay. I pray that tonight all of that stuff will change. It will shift your focus. Amen? Somebody say prayer. Okay. <laughs> Do you bring your Bibles to church? Do you bring notepads? Do you guys take notes? See, when you come to church, you need to bring your Bibles and you bring notepads. Take notes. Because in the middle of the night, when you cannot get hold of the pastor, as pastors, we love you. We want to be there for you in the middle of the night. And, and pastor, for some reason, the very people that you're always there for, you invest time, money, everything, and they are the very people that will look to you and leave you when you need them the most. Amen? Okay. So don't do that to him. Okay? And, and, and don't pull that thing that the Lord told me I'm, I'm, I'm really waiting for the day when we go before God and God will just start listening you said I did I said this and I said that and I said that wow it's a serious thing guys it's a very serious thing for you to say something that the Holy Spirit has not spoken there's a price to pay for it don't do that to your pastors if you have an issue whatever hash it out talk it out and if for whatever reason you just have to you just do it in peace. Don't spiritualize it. There is a price to pay for it. Amen? Even as I speak, and I, I, I declare that as of today, every time you come to church, you will invite somebody else. How many of you want to see the numbers double next Sunday? Do you believe that it can happen? Wave your hands if you, if you believe that next Sunday this, these numbers can double. So that's a whole bunch of people, but the responsibility is on you. So next Sunday when you're coming to church, bring one person, just one person. The numbers will double. Not rocket size, not spiritual, nothing spiritual about that. Amen. Jesus said, go make disciples. He didn't say, okay, let me, let, me, let me stay focused. Amen. The title of my message today is Breaking Through Your Strongholds. Somebody say, Breaking Through the Strongholds. And you can turn with me to... 2 Corinthians chapter 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. Thank you. We're going to read from verse 1 to 5. If you're there, say amen. If you're there, say amen. If you're there, say amen. Okay, I can go ahead. Now I, Paul, myself, beseech you by the meekness and gentleness of Christ, who in presence I'm based among you, but being present, absent, I'm hold toward, I'm bold toward you. But I beseech you that I may not be bold when I am present with that confidence. Wherewith I think to be bold against some, which think of us as we, as if we walk according to the flesh. Verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. Amen. Somebody repeat after me. Say, though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh. And I love this part. 
it says for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but are mighty through God to do what pulling down of let me repeat that again for the weapons of our warfare are not what but mighty through who to do what pulling down what strongholds let's watch the next part casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought somebody say every thought to the obedience of Christ let me take that verse again casting down imaginations casting down image nations image nations imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and the next part bring it into captivity every thought this walk as the children of God should not be taken lightly the moment you make a decision to follow God you cease to operate in the flesh you cease to operate in just one dimension amen if you are not saved you only focus on what you see but once you are saved now you operate in two dimensions you operate in the spirit and you operate in the flesh but your focus is the spirit amen for though we walk in the flesh we do not war after the flesh what are some of the things that we war after can somebody shout back at me? House, car, life, children. Shout back at me. M money, jobs, education. Shout back at me. Come on. Relationships. Shout back at me. Come on. School, friends. Talk, talk to me. Come on. Talk to me, Exodus. I'm your new. I'm your. Come on. You're not going to be able to get rid of me, okay? I'm your family now. So, so you, we need to learn to make this thing work. Talk back to me. What was that? Gas? <laughs> yeah. Okay, brothers and sisters of Christ, okay. That's all great. There's so, you can go on and on and on and on and on and on. But how do you deal with the thing behind the scenes? Is there anybody that really believes in the spirit realm? Is there anybody that does not believe that such thing exists? Okay, I'm in a good house. Good job, Pastor. He's a good pastor. Again, give it up for him. We are celebrating him today. <laughs> that means he's been teaching you well. But how do you deal with the things of the spirit when you are living in the flesh? But the weapons of our warfare how do you deal so that means we have some weapons to deal with things amen let me test you again what are your weapons prayer fasting the word consistency dedication worship loyalty fellowship Worship, dependence. Okay, you guys are very relevant. <coughs> I thought you guys were going to quote me scriptures, but let's, let's, let, let me try to get to the spiritual point. So, what does the Bible say our weapons are? The armor. The, what is it? You guys remember? Is it Ephesians 6 10? Put on the whole armor. Okay, can you name them? I got my antennas up. I'm just trying to pick up everything. Okay, good. The helmet of salvation. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You have a helmet of salvation. Amen? You have a breastplate of a weapon. Sword. 
your word. So when somebody does something that you want to cut them, don't cut them in the flesh. Cut them in the spirit with the word of God. The shield of faith. If you have faith, you can tell this mountain to be. Did God say you, you have to ask him to remove that mountain? He said you. So have you been going through stuff and you've been praying, God, can you do this for me? And you wonder why your prayer is not working? You have, the Bible says, you have everything pertaining to life. Everything that you need to be, all that you ought to be, is already in you. Just remember, Jesus said, the kingdom of God is within you. The question is, or the challenge is, we have become lazy Christians. We want God to constantly pour manna from the sky. But remember, manna is only for, it's a miracle, it's only for the now. God wants you to learn how to use your weapon so that when hard times arise you can actually walk through them with the weapons that you've been given so that in the middle of the night when you feel like you're being bombarded and being attacked you don't have to pick up the phone and try to reach out to Pastor Thompson but you pick up your word and apply your weapon amen you're taking notes uh, Mark chapter 7 verse 13 and I'm going to go through, skip them through uh, real quick as much as I can. And it says, thus you nullify the word of God by your tradition that you have handed down. And you do many things like that. We have not made the word of God not effect due to the traditions of our fathers, Jesus said. Whew. Every now and then in Christendom, we, 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 there, there's, a lot, there's a lot of cliche that we throw around and it's become normal and we we come to church and we pr play the music we jump and shout shout music and all that stuff but we don't we, we don't even have an idea what it means what we are doing just because we saw somebody in church do it so we just pick up the habit church culture and you do the same thing so somebody may be coming to church for a long time maybe they invited somebody to church and they asked them so well, why do you just jump and you know holler and all that stuff what, what does that mean and he said i felt the spirit huh. is that how you behave when the when the spirit comes upon you the bible said that you shall receive power good god almighty so hollowing all that stuff, man, I ain't seen no power. I see you excited with no power. Traditions, let's break away from it. In this third phase, this third phase that God is bringing us into as the body of, not just for this church, but I really believe, Pastor, that God is doing some amazing things within the body of Christ and especially within the GTA that we will manifest the power of God. Amen? And Jesus is the one that said it. And Jesus had a lot of issue with the Pharisees and the scribes and the, because they were just, I mean, they, this, they were not bad people. But they were just so set on traditions. And Jesus was trying to get your mindset to another place. Let me be careful. Is this only, uh, uh, is this, uh, only a New Testament church or an Old Testament church? Both? Okay, I'm just being careful because some place you have to be very careful because you say something from the Old Testament and it's like, wow, wow. No, we don't believe because Jesus did it all. Okay, Jesus said he did not come to condemn the law but to fulfill the law. So what Jesus was trying to say is based on all these traditions, it's great, but you guys need to go beyond, go to a, a little higher level. And I've been sharing this with my church for the last little while. That every time Jesus spoke a parable, he would say the kingdom of God is like. The kingdom of God is like. A man that traveled. The kingdom of God is like. The father whose son left. The kingdom of God is like. A sower. So all that Jesus was trying to do is to bring relevance to his day. Because Jesus is trying to bring the kingdom and our associate pastor says something all the time. He says, Jesus, he does, he, he does what he sees his father do. 
so he knows that some of the things of the kingdom in heaven we will not really understand with our natural minds so he has to try to break it down and bring in a knowledge that pertains to the time what we do where we live in so that we can have a clarification or understanding how to go about it amen so when you read the scriptures when you read the Bible you need the Spirit of God to bring revelation amen that's why it doesn't matter if you read you can read this Bible from you know front to cover back to back about a million times every single time you read it God will give you a new revelation why because the Word of God is the same yesterday today and forever in other words it means the Word of God is relevant let's break away from traditions for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal but they are mighty through God to pulling down strongholds what is a stronghold something that something that binds you holds you don't, don't be afraid to talk back to me shout it out I need to hear you. things that keep you away from God what else Right? Relevance? Okay. Chris, can, can, can you come for a second? Can you please stay right here? Doesn't matter what I do, don't move. You ready? Play football. Anybody play football? Can, can, I, can I go through you? Yeah, if I were to put you, can I go through you? Okay, let, let, let's take the, the two of them. You stand there, the two of you. So, here am I. God has a destiny set for me. Things that I want to do, I'm just trying to get to my destiny. But I need to get through the doors of my destiny. That's a really strong stronghold. Okay. The man is strong. <laughs> wow. Anything that prevents you from getting to your destiny. God, can you please help me? But you see, what happens... Thank you. Put your hands together for them. But you see, what happens is, after we pray, because we are asking God to remove them. But we have a weapon. But God said, see, the, the, the truth of the matter is, it, it is against the dignity of God to invade in the space of man. And that's why I have a problem when the world says, well, if there is a God, why is it that there is hunger in Africa? Why is it that people are going through so much pain and poverty and all that stuff? Well, it is against the dignity of God. Because when God created the world, he said, I've given you dominion to rule. So I'm not going to give you a car or give you a house with your key and everything. But every now and then, when you're not there, I sneak in and I try to take control. You'll find me controlling, right? So do you want people to see the God that you serve as a controlling God? God is not that controlling. The Spirit of God will not contend with man. So he's giving you all things pertaining to life, the resources, the weapons, to deal with these strongholds. So now I need to figure out, okay, what's the best thing to push through this stronghold? Well, I can negotiate with them, or I can find a greater power to back me up, to push them. And that's why you can, as, as a child of God, you can command a host of angels to back you up and push them. Or you can negotiate. And sometimes people negotiate with the devil. Just so you know. If you go find, you know, uh, 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 psychics and all these other pe people that cast spells, you know, witches and warlocks. And what you're doing is you are negotiating because you're dealing with familiar spirits. So you're not being delivered. You're just negotiating. And you can apply the same thing to your life. You can even sometimes negotiate with God. How many of you know that you can negotiate with God? If you don't believe me, check with King Hezekiah. Let me move on to my subject. Strongholds. 
before I get to my next uh, point, go to 2 Samuel chapter 5, 7 to 10. 2 Samuel chapter 5, 7 to 10. Now, it says, Nevertheless, David captured the fortress of Zion, which is the city of David. On that day, David had, David had said, Anyone who conquers the Jebusites will have to sue, will have to use the water shaft to reach those lame and blind who are David's enemies. Okay. David's enemies are the lame and the blind. So in Christendom, remember I talked about cliche. When you say enemy, you're not referring to your neighbor, one specific person. Do you understand that? So when Jesus said, let's love one another, pray for one another, you know, all these other, he's speaking to the church because sometimes even in church, we cannot get along. But for the sake of the kingdom, so that we can advance the kingdom, he wants us to live in perfect harmony and in peace. But there are people out there who have purpose in your heart that they hate God. These are the ones that God is referring to. Anything that opposes God is an enemy to God. Amen? Let me move on. He said, that is why they say that the blind and lame will not enter the palace. David then took up residence in the fortress and called it the city of David. He built up the area around it from the terraces inward and became more and more powerful because the Lord God Almighty was with him. Stronghold. Somebody say stronghold. Melchizedek is considered a priest because he had no beginning and no end. He was the only king that ruled over Jerusalem and after him there was none other. God gave the land to the Israelites but it's this one city that they could not conquer. Jerusalem. But it was taken over by the Jebusites. They decided to live side by side. And sometimes that's what happens. After you've gone through numerous times of resistance with the enemy, you get tired, you get weary, and you settle for mediocrity. And you say, you know what, man, I can't do this. Let me just, you know, make it through. God said you're going to be a doctor. God said you're going to be a lawyer. You try the, the exams numerous times, and you keep failing. So, hey, let me just get a regular nine to five because I can't start my own practice. God said you're going to do a record, whatever. And yet the finances are so difficult, you can't even get to pay for the studio to go in and do what you got to do. Well, let me just, you know, uh, take a gig. I'm speaking to you musicians. Let me take a gig outside and go play at the Trump, the Trump Tower. You settle for mediocrity instead of looking at the bigger picture. The blind and the lame were ruling a city. Have you ever sat down and thought, how can the blind and the lame lead, rule over a city? Does this sound like a country I know? Does this sound like a city I know? The blind and the lame are ruling over a city. People with no sense of sight, vision, and direction. People who cannot even walk are intimidating you because you refuse to exercise your godly given authority but one man said no this, this is not going to happen I will not dwell side by side with my enemies David sometimes it could be our very own spouse it could be sometimes your own family members that's trying to stop you from getting to the path the destiny that God has for you And instead of praying, starting to pray certain prayers, you, you get all friendly, oh, and, and I, I'm supposed to love it. And we know that. We, we're not, we don't hate nobody. We love, I love you, but I hate the devil in you. First John chapter 3, verse 8, he says, anyone who sins is of the devil. Because the devil sinned from the beginning. I don't dis I, I just, just don't dislike you. I, I, I don't have a problem with the fact that, you know, yeah, you're a human being, you have, you know, uh, proclivities, you have issues, and you, 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 you are gay. I, I don't hate you because you are that. I hate what you are doing. That's what my Bible tells me. 
I will get along with you. I will work with you. Will you ask me for what? I will give you what? I will love you. But I'm not going to sit there and say what you're doing is right. It's wrong. God hates it. You become, you become an enemy of God. I will save that topic for another time. So when you are praying spiritually, it's not that you are praying against one specific person. When you pray for God to remove people, you, you, you're not doing that to, because the, you don't understand the devil cannot operate by himself because he's not like God. He cannot be in so many places at the same time. So he employs his demons to work on his behalf. And demons do need a host to function. They need bodies to inhabit, to function. And if you allow yourself, the devil can use you. It doesn't matter how anointed you are. If you allow yourself, the devil you will use you. Myself as a pastor, if I allow myself, the devil will use me. Don't kid yourself. You are not too high and mighty for the devil to... All it takes is just a little foothold. Just a little bit. That's why the Bible says, give no room to the devil. You give him access to your house, the next thing you know, he goes in your closet comes out with your suit and tie fresh swag but whose fault was it your fault you have no room to the devil the lame and the blind intimated the man of God and the women of God the blind and the lame are ignorant people they intimidated the whole city Sometimes this is the case in our lives, in our city. David had to conquer for generations to come. As a child of God, I need to understand what you're doing for what you're doing, what you're doing, what you're toiling for today. It's not just for yourself. So stop being selfish. It's for generations to come. David did it so that Solomon didn't have to struggle. But it took one man. A giant slave to say no 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 I'm not I refuse to dwell side by side with my enemies because if you dwell with your enemies long enough the next thing you know either they conform to you or you conform to them but the truth of the matter is as long as they are enemies be rest assured they have a motive to win you to the side amen as a church we have to work in concrete in order to break through for other churches that will follow our footsteps go downtown Toronto they're closing down churches they're selling them they're putting them they're putting them up condos church we need to wake up we need to wake up because I don't want to I, God forbid if I die before my, my kids get to a certain time or age in their lives and they want to serve God they need a place to worship and the city and the nation said well we, we we, we don't need any churches we got to do business we got to promote tourism and all these other stuff and as a result of that my children cannot have a place of worship it's going to get to a point where we have it's, it's going to take you know the kingdom of god suffer violence and violence take it by force that's what's going to get to but as christians we need to learn to be proactive rather than always being reactive we don't do anything. We don't pray against things. But the moment things start happening, oh, church, we got to pray. Well, the, 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 the homosexuals are having a parade downtown. Where were you the whole time? What were you doing? Were we praying? Were you witnessing? But we've allowed the enemy to sow some seeds, and the seeds are now growing. Can you imagine when it matures? Because the Bible says, after sin matures is what? So the seeds were sown. The sower went. He, he saw the mount. So uh, 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 he saw, and at night time the enemy came. So tears among the wheat. Jesus said, "Watch and pray." Have you been watching? Have you been praying? Ask your neighbor. Have you been watching? Look at them. I bought an apple. Have you been praying? Let not the lame and the blind enter your house. I will love them. I will cherish them. And I will not trivialize the word of God. 
Strongholds are designed to limit you. They are designed to inhibit you. They are designed to stop you or prevent you from achieving God's divine purpose for your life. Strongholds will restrict you. Strongholds will delay you. So I needed to get through that door. But they were blocking me. They were stopping me. They were preventing me from getting to where I needed to get to. What is it in your life that you've been trying to get through for the longest time, but for some reason you seem to be hitting the glass ceiling? Every time you're trying to go higher, boom, boom. For the weapons of our warfare are not what? But what? Doing what? Let me take a look at the next verse. Verse 5. He says, Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Imaginations, images, dreams, visions, image nations. Do you remember how many times? Or the number of or different type of scenes of dreams that you have when you go to sleep. Image. Nations. But after you've seen those images, those images do manifest into thoughts. That's why the Bible says what? Uh, uh, um, bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of God. That's why you, you have to constantly guard your mind. What you see, what you hear, what you allow to enter your soul. Did you know that the fact that somebody hates you or think negatively about you can even do you more harm than them saying it? If that wasn't the case, the Bible won't, will not specify casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself. Imagination. What is it that somebody has imagined against you? They hate you, but they won't say a word to you. They don't like you. The very thought of you doing your best or becoming the, the church that God is predestined for you to be, that alone is hindering your growth. Because every act, image, thought, and lust go hand in hand. Lust happens or begins with imaginations then it goes into your thought process so your thought processes it but before you you allow it to get into your heart that's why the bible said it does what you can bring that thought into captivity before be, the moment it gets into your heart you're done somebody is thinking of you and they know that you can do a better job than they do. They know for sure, without a question of a doubt. And they say, man, I don't want this person to get the job. Thoughts. Thoughts. But you've been praying and you're wondering what's going on. But the weapons of your warfare, they are not carnal, the Bible says. So what have you done to bring those thoughts into captivity under the obedience of Christ, as the word says? Every now and then people say, well, I, I need to figure out, I need to find out the will of God for my life. And, come on, Chris, let's just stop trivializing this thing about the will of God. Because every now we try to find the easy way out. Well, the will of God, and I was praying, and the Holy Spirit said to me that his will is for me to be with this man. And knowing that the man that you want to be with, they ain't saved. The will of God, everything written in here is the will of God for your life. So if God's word said, don't do it, just don't do it. Don't give me a spiritual explanation that the spirit of God said whatever. He is the word embodied in the spirit. 
don't try and run every where trying to get the will of God and well I'm praying for the will of God and you know if the will of God works Christian sometimes you make my head hurt it's plain and simple walk in the word that's why Jesus said pastor let's not just be only hearers of the word by what did Jesus say, okay, when you hear the word, now you go pray and get a revelation and now it will be the will of God? No. Hear it, then do it. Now watch this. We as the children of God, in order for us to use these weapons that we have, we have to first hear and do. Look to your neighbor and tell me you have to hear and you have to do. And for the last uh, six months or so, that's uh, something that God, a revelation that uh, uh, I believe that God has given me. And it's a principle that as a child of God, if you start using in your prayer life, is going to help you. Amen? How many of you know the story of Elijah? The prophet Elijah? Does everybody know? Okay, if you don't know it, I'm going to sort of paraphrase it. We'll say a little bit about it, but go home and read it. So, Elijah prayed that there would not be any rain nor dew for three and a half years he spoke okay he spoke based on what he heard what the Spirit of God told him and he repeated what the Spirit of God said and it did not rain after three and a half years he comes back and the Bible says he speaks into the heavens that there will be rain again then he speaks into the earth my principle that I've learned I'm trying to share with you today is when you pray you need to speak into the heavens then speak into the earth because before anything manifests in the natural is already taking place in the so if you don't see it you will not see it when you see it Somebody says something. It's a, it's a quote that I'm trying to get from someone. Some, some foolishness. But, <laughs> but it's the truth. If you don't see it in the spiritual, you will not recognize it when it happens in the natural. So as children of God, when we come to church on the Sunday and stuff like that, this is not a time for you to try to, oh, I'm trying to receive a re revelation. You must have received a re revelation throughout the week because God has shown you certain things. So when we come to church, everything that we are seeing is just a manifestation of what we've seen the Father do the whole time during the week. It's the will of God. It's the Bible. I'm not making up stuff. Ezekiel, I believe was Ezekiel 20, 30, around there. He found himself at a place. And the Bible says that the Spirit of God took him through a valley of dry bones. And that the Spirit of God started speaking to him. And he said, you speak to these dry bones. If it was that some, 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 some of us today, we would say, well, but, you know, Holy Spirit, why don't you just speak, you know? No, he said, you speak what I've instructed you to speak. And he spoke to the dry bones, and flesh came on those bones, and they lived. Okay? That's the Old Testament, okay? Some people say, well, but that's the Old Testament. Let's come to the New Testament. Jesus said, whatsoever thing that you bind in the will be bound in the and whatsoever you lose in the will be loosed in the huh. simple principle it's not rocket science you didn't have to pray for 40 days the will of God the word get in your word look to him and say get in your word There are certain things in battle that you cannot win until you control your strongholds. Your finances, your dreams, your ministry, your callings. The truth of the matter is, life is for uncommon people. 
is for uncommon people. So if you think you're going to make it through life with a common mindset, you got it wrong. And the world does it best. People that have gone ahead, gone so far in life, they do uncommon things. Steve Jobs, Bill Gates, Donald Trump, who else? Name them. Warren Buffett, name them. Oprah, name them. And the truth of the matter is, they, they, they've been taking all these principles from the Word. But they hate God. And the reason why, some people say, well, if they hate God, how come God does, won't strike them? Well, because, again, it's against the dignity of God. It's only a matter of time, though. Because everything must unfold according to the Word and the principles of God. Sin, when it's matured, leads to death. It's just a matter of time. It's just a matter of maturity. Amen? Amen? I, 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 I. Is everybody okay with what, what I'm saying? I don't want to lose anybody. If you don't understand anything, just ask me, okay? Ephesians 4.27, you can jot it down. Do not give the devil a foot full. Amen? You give him one, it's going to take about ten. 2 Samuel 23.15-17, let's read that through real quick. 2 Samuel 23, 15 to 17. David longed for water and said, Oh, that someone would get me a drink of water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem. So the three mighty warriors broke through the Philistine lines, drew water from the well near the gate of Bethlehem and carried it back to David, but he refused to drink it. Instead, he poured it out before the Lord. Far be it from me, Lord, to do this. He said, Is it not the blood of men who went at the rest of your lives? And David would not drink it. Such were the exploits of the three mighty warriors. The Bible said, David longed for waters. A desire, he had the desire for a water from another land. But there was a stronghold, a barrier. You need to be able to confront that which is standing in your way for you to succeed and get to your divine destiny. He said he, he longed for the waters. He said anybody that, that have longings, that have desires. I'm talking about godly desires, by the way. Desires. But it took three warriors to go through the gates. We went past the Philistine lines to at the arrest. See, the problem is, if you choose to live side by side with the enemies, you are actually putting the next generation in the rest. David said, no, I'm not going to drink the water because you guys had to risk your lives. And I, I'm pretty sure David really kind of regret not going to battle with these people and defeating them. But the three warriors, they had to break through. Somebody say break through. There won't be any breakthrough without strongholds. There was a barrier. Somebody has to break through for others. Unseen barriers. You long to have a job, good marriage, good family, finances, all of that stuff. But something is getting in the way. A stronghold. Somebody's thoughts of you, somebody's imagination of you, for you not to succeed is holding you down. See, every religion has your do's and don'ts, and 99% of the time they all preach love. You know, the Muslims claim to preach love, forget about the jihad stuff. Buddhists, love, 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 love. And as children of God, we need to really come to understanding I'm all for the love revolution. I'm all for love. I'm all for love. But what separates us as the children of God or as Christians from other religion is the power of God. Amen? Acts chapter 5 verse 5. I'm going to read this real quick. 
and we'll be closing off. Now a man named Ananias, together with his wife, Sapphira, also sold a piece of property. <laughs> Do you guys know the story? Should, should I, how many says I should read? <laughs> okay. With his wife's full knowledge, he kept back part of the money for himself, but brought the rest and put it at the apostles' feet. Then Peter said, Ananias, how is it that Satan has also filled your heart that you have lied to the Holy Spirit and have kept for yourself some of the money that you received from the land? Imaginations, Ananias and Sapphira, they imagined certain things. They lusted after the money. Then it became a thought. Then the thought came into your heart. Then the Satan filled your heart. So Peter asked him, how so that you've allowed yourself to be filled with Satan. Verse 4. Didn't it belong to you before it was sold? And after it was sold, wasn't the money at your disposal? What made you think of doing such a thing? You have not lied just to humans, but to God. When Ananias heard this, he fell and died. Watch. Make this the seasonal stepping stone today on. Learn to have respect and honor for the men and women of God. What, what the pastor says or preaches is not just coming from a man, but the Spirit of God. That's why Peter said, you've not just lied to a man, but you've lied to the Holy Spirit. And it's a very deadly thing. That's why I said, for people who say, well, the Lord, I heard the Lord told me to do this, and the Lord told me to do that, knowing very well, you did not hear Jeff. There's a price to pay for it. And the great fear seized all who heard what had happened. Then some young men came forward, wrapped up his body, and carried him out of the, uh, carried him out and buried him. About three hours later, his wife came in, not knowing what had happened. Peter asked her, "Tell me, is this the price you and Ananias got for the land?" She replied, "Yes," she said. That is the prize. Peter said to her, How could you conspire to test the Spirit of the Lord? Listen, the feet of the man who buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out also. Sounds like a movie. At that moment, she fell down at his feet and died. Then the young man came and, finding her dead, carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Great fear sees of uh, the whole church all who heard those these events. Never again, never again lie to a man of God. Never. Please, respect the office and the authority of the man of God. And hear me out. There may be other people out there that really abuse the authority that God has given them. But if you find such as you, the man or woman of God in this house, Respect, honor, and listen. There is a price to pay if you do not heed to good counsel. Amen. Strongholds. Let me ask you today: What is your stronghold? Just a few moments. What is your stronghold? What are some of the imaginations? Your even your own very imagination that's actually preventing you from getting to your destiny. Other than that, the ones that people think about you. Because you see yourself small. You, can't, you cannot see past beyond what with your natural eyes. Do you see what God sees? Do you see yourself as how God sees you? Somebody say, God, open my eyes. Help me believe that I am what you see. What is limiting you today? For somebody, God gave you a word that you're going to start your business. And you've been debating, God, I don't know where to start. I don't know how to do it. But you're limiting yourself. 
for some of you it's just a stronghold that you know relationship that you are in and this person has got a hold of you that you can't seem to get past and every time you know the, the word of god comes you're supposed to get out of uh, this relationship you start to oh i'm waiting on god the will of god well the will of god said the relationship is not healthy the man the woman they want you to sleep with them it's not healthy get out it's a stronghold get out your finances you're struggling you try to you know make ends meet but it doesn't happen and so God says give and instead of you trusting God and sowing into the kingdom of God you trivialize it well I don't know if I'm so and the pastor's probably gonna buy a Mercedes and all these other things well even if they did who cares just remain obedient to God and again hear me well there are people out there that just blatantly abuse the authority but there are some that just love God and we as pastors we are accountable for everything that we do but you need to be obedient don't let anybody or anything else stop you from doing what you need to do do the right thing come on look at your neighbor and say do the right thing Come on, turn to your other neighbor and tell do the right thing, do the right thing, do the right thing, do the right thing, do the right thing. So that we're going to do something, we're going to pray. Look to him and say, we're going to pray. Can you stand up on your feet real quick? Did you receive something today? Okay. Now we've heard it. We're going to do it. We're going to do it. Look at him and say, we're going to do it. this like every week but would you like to ride to church with me oh uh, come on mrs edwards you'll like my church we have some hot music it may not be what you're bumping at all but it's hot we get down what do you say mrs edwards oh uh, i suppose I've heard it said that 80% of first-time church visitors come because someone personally invited them. All people need to feel loved and wanted, and for some people, it just takes having someone offer to give them a ride to church. We have something great going on at this church. People's lives are being transformed by God's love. Your homework this week is to find at least one person who could use a little more of that love and invite them to come with you next week. Trust me, it's worth the extra effort. Mrs. Edwards, you want to listen to some music on the way? Go ahead, your choice. <sighs> okay, here we are. <laughs> 